Hi everyone. I hope you enjoyed the service MeshCon so far. In this talk, we are going to speak about how virtual machines are becoming first class citizens in service mesh. I am Denis Janot, director of uh, field engineering in EMEA at uh, solo.io. So at the beginning, uh, everything started with these monolith uh, applications and we've seen um, uh, the evolution to microservices and obviously uh, Kubernetes became the most popular platform to run these uh, microservices. Um, but we ended up with uh, two separate worlds, right? On one side, you have uh, some legacy applications running on bare metal servers or uh, on virtualization platform like VMware. And on the other side, uh, the new modern cloud native applications running on uh, Kubernetes. Uh, and then after that, what we've seen is the service mesh um, started to become uh, really popular with this idea that um, you can have on one side a control plane where uh, you define all your policies and on the other side, the data plane where um, all these policies are enforced. And when we speak about this policy, we speak about things like um, being able to encrypt uh, communication between microservices, uh, being able to get some telemetry information and all these things being becoming possible because um, of this uh, sidecar proxy that is running on each pod. Uh, in most of the cases on most of the service mesh out there and that they are based on uh, Envoy. And uh, basically you don't need to do anything uh, at the application level, but instead um, you use the service mesh to provide all these capabilities like uh, encryption, telemetry, else check, and, and so on. Um, and, and what's very interesting is that it's, um, it's about to unify um, these two worlds. Uh, what I mean by that is that you have uh, the virtualization, um, you know, the, the legacy application running on, on VMware or bar metal um, that can now be part of the mesh. And that's very interesting uh, because it means that I can now have like communication between the legacy application and the modern applications uh, being encrypted. I can, you know, do like some kind of uh, canary deployment, for example, um, we, we, we will see that just here. Like you can have like the same application running on the legacy environment and on uh, Kubernetes and you want to seamlessly migrate from like you know from from vmware to uh, kubernetes this application that becomes possible because that's one of the nice thing, nice thing you can do with service mesh you can do some kind of uh, you know canary deployment some kind of traffic shift say okay at the beginning i start by having all my requests for this application are sent to this uh, legacy environment but slowly i start to send like 25 25 percent of the requests um, to uh, the same application running on Kubernetes and I can check that everything works well. And, and then when um, I see that everything is fine, I can migrate completely the application. So I can now do this migration from uh, legacy environment to uh, Kubernetes or to containers uh, without any downtime. Um, I can also um, get some extra benefits for my legacy application, even if I want to keep them running uh, in um, their current platform, uh, I can still, um, you know, get the encryption, like I said before, but I can also get some telemetry information and, and, and other benefits that uh, I generally get with a, with a service mesh. Uh, there are different uh, service mesh technology uh, available, um, but here we'll focus on Istio. Um, if you look at the CNCF survey uh, that has been done uh, last year, uh, we can see that uh, Istio is definitely the most popular service mesh out there. And uh, I would say that uh, it will be interesting to see the, the results in uh, 2021. And I'm pretty sure it's um, even, you know, bigger now. So we, we are really going to focus on, uh, on Istio in this talk. And also, so one of the reasons is because uh, it's definitely the most popular one, but also the other reason is that it now has uh, a really good support for um, VMs and, and bare metal servers. 
So let's jump directly into the demo and uh, and show you uh, how all these things are, are you know done. And uh, especially what we will do in the demo is that uh, we will use this uh, environment where uh, you see I'm running multiple Kubernetes clusters using uh, kind. Uh, and uh, on uh, these different Kubernetes cluster, I have deployed like Istio and two of them. And I've deployed Glue Mesh in, in the third one. I'll speak about Glue Mesh very quickly uh, later on. And uh, what's interesting here is that I will show you that you can test uh, this uh, VM uh, integration using a, a Docker container as well. And it makes your life a lot easier um, if you want to um, put in place like automated testing and so, and so on. Like uh, it's, uh, it's very convenient to be able to simulate this VM um, as a as a container, so I, I'll I'll uh, I'll show you how we uh, we start from uh, from a, a Docker container and we 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 put in place all the prerequisites to to join the mesh, and uh, I won't go through all the details because uh, obviously you can you know you can find them in the Istio documentation. Uh, if you go to virtual machine installation, uh, you'll see. Uh, a lot of the things that we will do uh, in the demo are, are described there. The difference is that um, instead of running this command in the VM, I, I will run them in a container, and and I will have to to adjust a few things just to to make it uh, to make it work. But uh, but the the baseline for uh, the demo um, is uh, is is here. So um, let's jump in the demo environment. So I have like four windows here. You can see a one where I will prepare everything for the for the VM. And then um, what we will do is that uh, we will start with uh, an environment where, um, as I said, you know, we have two Kubernetes clusters here and um, I've deployed uh, the uh, book info application on both clusters. And uh, we are going to start with uh, um, this situation where when I send a request on cluster one and I try to um, to go to the, the product page, then um, you know the product page uh, is uh, going to um, send requests to the different services and we will play with this detail service, right? So we will have like uh, at the beginning, we will uh, try to have like uh, the, the product page uh, running uh, the details, sorry, running in a VM. And that's why, uh, where we will start. We will uh, deploy all the prerequisites so that the VM becomes part of the mesh. And we have like um, the product page going to the detail service running here. And then later we will um, show how we can migrate seamlessly like uh, to uh, Kubernetes. So migration, migrating this app from the VM to Kubernetes uh, slowly, you know, like uh, taking a canary approach. And then at the end, I even show you like how you can have like uh, requests going, some requests going to the VM, some requests going to the pod locally, and some even other requests going in another cluster. And that is, you know, made uh, very easy with uh, with Blue Mesh. So let's, uh, let's jump into the demo now. And uh, as you can see here, uh, I have like uh, my book, uh, book info application running, uh, but uh, the details, which is this part of, of the demo uh, of, the, of the page here, uh, we will make it run in, uh, in a VM. So to do that, uh, I'll just jump here. And uh, you see, I will call my VM VM1. I will use a namespace virtual machines. I will create a service account for this VM and, and I specify which network I am on, which is the network uh, of uh, the, 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 the VM, like network one is the, the network corresponding to my first cluster and the VM network uh, is uh, the network of my VM. That means that I will use gateways to communicate with, uh, with the clusters. So I just like to copy and paste here. Then uh, I'll create a working directory where I will create all the files that need to be transferred to the VM, which in my case will be like a, a Docker container. Um, I will uh, create a namespace for this VM and service account. So the service account 
um, that will be used to generate a certificate for this VM um, is also uh, residing on Kubernetes. And uh, then you have this notion of like a workload group that you can use if you want to dynamically register VMs. But here we are just going to create this YAML and we will use this YAML as an input for the Istio CTL command line that we prepare all the files that uh, that we need for configuring the VM. So I'm just going to run this command here. And uh, it's here, what's interesting is that we can take a look at what has been generated for us. And you see, um, we have like a, a short living token. So that's kind of a, a way for the VM to identify itself uh, that to prove it, to prove that uh, it has access to this service account and it will be used to be able to get the certificate from um, the Istio control plane. And then later on, the certificate will be rotated and uh, every time the, the VM will identify itself with this certificate, not with the token anymore. Uh, we have also some you know, information you can uh, take a look at uh, what what you have here, but uh, I won't go and cover everything. As I said, it's uh, mostly documented, but you can see information about the networks and you know the name of the VM and trust domain and so on. Um, so then now I'm going to start Docker container that will be, uh, we will consider as my VM. And you see here, what I do is that I use the image, uh, the Docker image of uh, the details uh, service. So that will be the baseline. It will be easier for me to run the detailed service because that's already what uh, this image provides. So I'm going to just uh, run this uh, image. And again, you can consider it as a VM. It's not part of the Kubernetes cluster. It's running as a, a Docker container uh, like Kind is doing. So if I do a Docker PS, you can see I have kind my three kind clusters, and uh, I have uh, my uh, VM here. So now I have my uh, VM as a container. Uh, I'm going to just deploy some prerequisites that uh, are needed for uh, deploying Istio, um, the Istio agents. And uh, I'm going also to um, prepare the host file that I will need uh, so that the VM knows how to contact the control plane. So that's the IP of my um, gateway to reach uh, STOD. Then uh, here I'm going to just, you see, like transfer the different files that I got when I ran this command line here. So just, you see, just doing like Docker uh, exec uh, to copy some of the files when I created, you see, when I, I started my, my uh, container, I just mapped this directory here so I can just like copy internally. Then I'm going to deploy uh, the Istio uh, sidecar proxy um, here. So it will be running directly in my, in my container. And uh, again, copying a few other files that uh, I had before. Uh, copying the host file that contains this entry and changing some permissions on directories. And at that point in time, there is one, one uh, special tweak. So the way uh, it works in, in a recent version of Istio is that you have um, a DNS proxy running uh, within the Istio agents. And there is an IP tables rule that redirect all the DNS requests um, to this uh, proxy so that uh, it knows about the IP of the different uh, you know, pods or in, in our case will be like the gateway and, and so on. But um, by default, the DNS server is this one, uh, which is kind of a local uh, IP as well. And that, that, that prevent this uh, IP tables rule to work properly. So I'm just going to change the reserve.conf of this uh, container so that it's just used like the Google DNS and the IP tables rules will, will work properly. Um, finally, I'm going to start 
Istio agent in this uh, in this container. So now I have like uh, my container that uh, you can consider as the VM. And uh, if everything works well, and I, I look at the clusters entries here, uh, I should see uh, information for how to reach my services running in the cluster. Like for example, if I want to reach the product page and you see here, um, I, I see the, if I want to reach the product page, this is the IP and this is the port. And as you can see, this is the same as you can see here because I use the Istio Ingress Gateway because my VM is in a different network. Um, we can also check that uh, we can access uh, the product page from the details, which is not really what we we want to do, right? Normally the product page try to reach the, the, the details, but here is just to show you that the communication from uh, the, the, the VM to uh, the, the, the services running in Kubernetes uh, is fine. And you see, I have a 200, okay. And everything is secure, by the way, I didn't say that, but everything is secured with MTLS. If I would go to cluster one um, and the Istio system uh, namespace, I would, you could see that there is a key authentication that has been created here which uh, enforced uh, strict MTLS. So here we, we show that we can get like strict MTLS and encryption between the VM and the pod when it's the VM that initiate the connection. And we, we are able to reach the services that are running in Kubernetes. Now we are going to start the details uh, service in this VM. And um, we are going to create uh, a service and a workload entry so that um, the pods that are running on Kubernetes, they know how to reach the details service that is now running in my VM. And you see here, uh, the most important part is here, you see the VM IP, uh, which is basically the IP of uh, my um, Docker container. Uh, and I can just show you that here. So we need, so it needs to know, you know, that this is running here. So I'm, I'm going to just create the service and the service entry. And finally, uh, what I want, and, and this is where we start to use Blue Mesh, um, we are going to use like a traffic policy. Uh, it makes our life easier because I could do that directly with Istio, create a, a virtual service and you know, destination rules and so on, but uh, Blue Mesh makes that uh, easier for me to do so. So I create what we call a traffic policy, where I say when I have a request coming from the default namespace and going to um, the cluster, um, going to the detailed service on cluster one, what I want is that I want to send this request to the VM in state. So the product page will send the, tra the, the request uh, to the detail service on the VM because the product page is residing on, on this same space. So I'm just going to create this policy here. And uh, what I want to do as well is that I want to uh, see uh, if I do like a tail minus F, I want to take a look at the access logs here. So I can see the access logs in uh, the different places. So here is the, the details pod on cluster one, the details pod on cluster two, and the details pod on uh, the details VM. So uh, because of the rule I created here, I should expect now the access logs to change here, right? On this place. So I'm going to just first of all, try and see if uh, everything works well here. I can still see my details and uh, should see here. So that's good. It's going to the VM. That's easy. I can also even go to Kiali and I can see um, that uh, it's going, uh, you see the rating and you see the VM, right? So you see the product page is sending traffic to my VM. And I can also even go to Blue Mesh and see that I have my current policy, which says when I have workloads here in the detail in the default namespace, 
that send requests to the de detailed service, then uh, everything goes to the VM. So that's the, the current state. Now let's say I want to start to, to send some traffic to the details running on cluster one so that I can start to seamlessly migrate uh, from my legacy environment to my container. So then I would do something like that. You see, I say, I, I, I update my traffic policy and the, the dif dif difference here is that you see, I, I only send 75% of the request to, to the VM because I start to send 25% to uh, the service running on uh, the cluster. So I'm going to update that. And here again, now I should see some of the request going here and some of the request going there, right? So I can go back here and refresh. And uh, I should see here very quickly um, some access logs uh, showing me that you see here and here. The, the requests are going, now they are spread across these two clusters. And uh, in Kiali, I can also see that, you see, it sends some of the requests on the same cluster in the details and some of the requests in, in the VM, right? And, and again, if I go to Blue Mesh, I see that as well, right? 75% are configured to go to the VM and 25% uh, go to the, the details on uh, cluster one. And now what's uh, quite nice is that I can also, you know, even like refresh all the stuff here and I can create a nice policy of, first of all, I, I can say, uh, I want now to go and switch completely to uh, Kubernetes so that now all the requests will go only here in the clusters. They are not going in the legacy environment any, any, anymore. And again, I can just like uh, refresh that here and uh, I should be able to see my access logs uh, moving just there. So just proving that, uh, yeah, everything goes on the on the right place. Like I was expecting, the migration is done. Now from my legacy environment to uh, Kubernetes, I can see that here as well, all the requests go now to the details here. They are not going to the VM anymore. And I can um, show you like a, a small bonus that, uh, and that's also another very nice things you get with Blue Mesh is that it makes your life a lot easier when you want to do like, uh, you know, cross cluster communication. I could have done like a, um, an example where I would configure a failover. If I cannot reach locally, I go to the other cluster. Um, but here, just to make it uh, simpler, what I did is that I create a, a traffic policy where I would say 50% go to the VM, 25% uh, go to uh, cluster one, and 25% go to cluster two. So now I spread my request not only between my VMs and my pods on cluster one, but I can spread my request uh, between my VM, my pod on cluster one, and my pod on cluster two, and everything, as you can see, very easily by you know just creating like a, a traffic policy like that. So I just go there, I apply this, and now I can uh, refresh my app, like click many times here. Um, again, I can see the spread is done here and you can see the logs moving everywhere and you can see you know uh, Kiali will also show you like uh, a nice uh, picture where um, you you will see um, all the requests going you know across all these different uh, environments and and even like uh, depending on how long we wait for the for the metrics but we will also see uh, even like uh, the the, met the metrics showing that uh, this is going through, you know, all the clusters. And yeah, normally you should have like a a cluster two uh, box uh, displayed somewhere here. Um, it's just that um, it's not showing right now. So let me refresh a little bit more. And we, we should see like the details here, the, the, the details running in the VM, but uh, also the, the details uh, from the uh, from the other cluster, like you see here, just like to be a bit of time to refresh. 
But you see now I also see like the request going to uh, the other uh, cluster. And that's possible because we consolidate all the metrics with Blue Mesh uh, as well. And we can present them today. You consume them the way you want, like in Kiali, but tomorrow it will be even like integrated in the in the in the Blue Mesh UI. So as I said, you know, I, I use Blue Mesh in uh, in the in the demo to make my life easier for managing the traffic, but you can also use it like uh, for discovery. So it discovers all the workloads on all the clusters. Instead of having each cluster discovering the workload on all the other clusters, this discovery is done by Blue Mesh. It's more secure and it just like uh, make the other clusters aware of, of that. Uh, you have the failover I spoke uh, um, about before. Uh, you have the ability to have like um, uh, consolidation of the metrics, like I, I said, but also uh, being able to do that with the access logs, um, being able to um, have like a global airbag where you can define who can do what across all these different clusters. Uh, we have like a very nice support of WebAssembly there as well. So if you are interested, you know, you can go on our website and or on our Slack channel and you can you can ping us. So thank you very much for uh, attending this session. I, I hope it was uh, useful and uh, and I think we we now have some uh, some time for uh, Q and A.